Today, we're going to talk about hardware hacking for JS developers. Um, I hope you learned two things from this talk. Oh, oh, my intro. I'm Jurgison on Twitter. I do a podcast called JS Jabber with Chuck, who is sitting right there. Um, I work at ITV. I discovered that I was getting a lot of recruiter spam, so I actually changed my job title to His Illustrious Majesty Grand Viceroy of Code. And then since then, no recruiter spam at all. Um, so Stanley was telling the truth. That is my title at work. So two things I hope you learned today. One is that I am a serious artist with serious art skills, as you'll see. Um, and the other one is that you guys all have magical powers. So in the last several years, the barriers of entry to doing things with hardware have, have just dropped to the floor. The fact that you know how to do software means you don't really need to know anything about hardware. You can just do amazing things by the virtue of the fact that you know software. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the magic powers. Um, here is the... the Sum total of all knowledge about hardware, that big blob, and the little red dot is all the things you know to, to build cool stuff, which is not very much. So we'll talk about all you need to know. This is all you need to know. <laughs> so the plus 5v means that current comes out of some source. This little, can you see my mouse? Yeah, who needs a laser pointer? This little thing means there's a switch. So this circuit is disconnected right now, but you can close this switch to make current flow from here. It flows through this triangle thing, which is um, a diode. It'll be an LED in all our stuff. And then it flows to ground. So current flows from power, maybe through a switch. If you connect it, it then goes through here, through this diode to ground. That's, that's it. Now you know all that I know about hardware. Um, <laughs> aren't you excited for this talk now? OK, so the magic spell number one we're going to talk about is how you can take physical input from the real world and send it to your computer and maybe the cloud? I don't know. Um, stuff like that. Uh, so to do that, we're going to talk about a library called Johnny5. Um, Johnny5 is a node library that is written to help you communicate through a USB drive or USB port to a hardware device. Um, and I'll show a little bit of code and a, and a small demo example of how you can do stuff with it. And then we'll get into a little bit more uh, intense example. Pay no attention to my Twitter below. All right, can everybody see this? Is this big enough? Is this bright enough? Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Also, we'll do that. Okay, um, so we require Johnny5. It's just a library we, we require. We create a new board object, um, and that just initializes the board, and then it gives a callback. Um, it's kind of like a, a jQuery-ish abstraction over hardware so that you deal with these high-level concepts like callbacks and events instead of dealing with like reading ones and zeros and stuff. Um, so when the board is ready, we'll call this board ready function. Uh, I think I have this other one down here that is not. I, I just gave away my, my talk. That wasn't supposed to be commented out. All right, so we're going to run this code. Um, codes, button demo. And then it's going to start up, and then the board is ready. And now um, we'll talk about the rest of the stuff in here. So this pin thing, um, the Arduino boards have a, a bunch of pins where you can plug wires into. You can basically read from them or, or write to them. When you read from them, you're just reading whether uh, electricity, oh, thanks, Taterbase. Um, <laughs> we're, we're reading whether electricity is being sent into the board or not. You just basically get a 1 or a 0. When you're writing to it, you're just either writing full on or you're not writing anything. Um, that's with digital pins. So right now we're saying we'll read from pin 1, or sorry, pin 2. Uh, every time we read a value from it, we'll call this callback. So that is what this code will do. Um, that was commented out for some reason, so I'm going to rerun this. So there's a big fat red button connected to pin two right now. And when I press it, amazing things will happen down there. Hooray, amazing things. So one thing you might notice is that's really noisy. I pressed the button three times, and it spit out like a trillion values, right? That's, that seems uh, less than ideal. So how would you deal with this? Well, we have tools in JavaScript to deal with avoiding calling a function a bunch of times, right? Do you guys know what underscore debounce is, or debouncing in general? Have you ever used that to prevent some callback from being called? too many times in a certain time period. So we can do that same thing with hardware. Uh, it's just JavaScript, right? So we can use underscore with hardware. Why not? 
Um, so our problem is this callback is being called too many times. We just want it to be called once for each button press. Um, so we'll just debounce it. We'll only call it once within a 200 millisecond window. So we change that. Restart this guy. And then I'll make this bigger. And the board is ready. And then we press it once, and we only get one thing. So that's just kind of to show you the basics of Johnny5, how it works, and how you can manipulate stuff with JavaScript. We'll do another example now. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, whoops. Cool. So if we go back to the slides. Uh, all right. Here we go. So um, the demo I'm going to show right now is super simple. We're just going to take some input from the Arduino through Johnny5, turn it into socket IO commands. Um, the reason I'm using reveal.js here is because I needed to do this demo. Otherwise, my slides could just be like a folder in Finder that I would go through. But since I want to control the slides from the hardware, um, socket IO will send a command to the JavaScript. JavaScript will, in the browser, will talk to reveal and, and change the slides, hopefully, if everything works. So there's a button down here that I press, and it goes forward. It can go back, and that is pretty neat. <laughs> All right. Uh, now I'm going to kill this guy because it gets wonky. And then we'll start this up again, and don't spoil it. OK, another thing you might have noticed is it's pretty boring that this button doesn't really do anything besides change the slides. So I made it play the inception noise for you. I just thought that was cooler. Um, cool. OK, so that's, that's an example of how you can take out, or sorry, inputs from the physical world and send them to your computer. I mean, slides changing isn't that cool if you look at it um, in its own context. But you could replace that with anything you want, right? You could send tweets. You could commit code um, by like punching a giant button. How cool would that be? So just use your imagination. So the next spell is where you take, yeah, ship it with a big button, a big ship it button. That'd be sweet. The next magic spell is where you take input into your computer and turn it into physical output in the real world. Um, that could come from the cloud, too. And it will. But first, for some background, how many of you know what Twitch Plays Pokemon is? OK. Everybody turn to your neighbor and explain what Twitch Plays Pokemon is. Just kidding. Um, so Twitch Plays Pokemon is the internet version of a million monkeys on a million keyboards typing Shakespeare. So someone took a Game Boy emulator um, and hooked it up to this live streaming service with a chat room so that chat commands in this chat room will go into the emulator and do things in the game. They hooked it up to Pokemon. So there was 100,000 people typing like, up, select, start in this Pokemon game, and basically doing their best to, to ruin it. Um, they beat it after like six weeks. It was pretty amazing. But it was really fun to watch. So uh, today, in, inspired by this, I want to do Mountain West JS plays Lightbot. Lightbot is a friendly robot on this table that loves you. And, and wants to make you happy. And he'll do that by having you play a game. So if, if people aren't in the IRC channel, um, you should go there now. But not so many people that I can't connect to the internet, because then <laughs> this won't work. So if you, yeah, this is the IRC channel. You can go there in a browser if you go to webchat.freenode.net. Um, if you have an IRC client, then you probably don't need that. But um, we're going we're gonna to do some. IRC stuff. So Lightbot can do four things. This is Lightbot, by the way. He has a cool name and looks less cool, but it's still pretty fun. So Lightbot can start the game. Uh, you, he can play, which means you take a turn in the game, and he can go faster or slower. So the actual game is the lights will just like bounce back and forth between here. You're trying to stop it on the red light. And if you do that, you win. Otherwise, you lose. Um, he has a kill command. Don't, don't do Lightbot kill. We will die. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me start this. And then I do not know why that is there. Uh, let's go to here and see if Lightbot joined. Can everybody see this?
Oh yeah, cloud to butt plus, IRC butt is, that's why it says IRC butt. So people are already typing stuff. Uh, somebody made it go really fast, and that's why it's doing the strobe mode. Someone should type lightbot play, and then it'll, oh, you guys lost. <laughs> so you have to type lightbot start again to, to make it start up again. Uh, and you can speed it up or slow it down. Um, yeah, this is, so imagine this, but with 100,000 people. <laughs> And that's Twitch Plays Pokemon. But this is cool, right? We're all, through the magic of the cloud, participating in the real world with this little robot thing. Oh yeah, someone type Lightbot Kill. Lightbot only gives hugs, not death, so. <laughs> yes, that is Lightbot. I'm gonna applaud you guys. Good work. Um, I'm gonna make Lightbot go to sleep now. We have more stuff to talk about. Okay. Back to the slides. Doop -doo. Okay, um, there's, there's a couple more demos. One of them is with this Xbox controller. So you can actually use input from the Xbox controller and do cool hardware stuff. Uh, so Lightbot, go back to your home. And I already have this plugged in because I'm so prepared. All right. So there's a library called Node Xbox Controller. It basically gives you a bunch of events you can bind to um, for all of the buttons on the Xbox controller. So you can listen on stuff for the, the little thumbsticks and all these individual buttons. I'll show you, but I'll do the demo first. So we will do Node. I hope this works. OK, cool. So I just hacked, this is a super simple program. All it does is when I press up, it lights up the top light, left lights up the left light, right, right light, down. Doesn't work because this wiring is messed up. Um, but if I jiggle it enough, <laughs> I will move on to avoid embarrassment. <laughs> cool, so um, let me show you the code because that will come in handy in a little bit. All right, so same thing as before, we require Johnny5. We also require the Xbox controller library. Uh, we use underscore to debounce more stuff. We make a new board, we make a new Xbox controller. This we can skip over because it isn't super important, but here we go. Board on ready. We make four LEDs and we stick them in an object um, where the names are just which direction they are on the board. And then when we move the left um, thumbstick, we get this callback fired that gives a position. The position is the X and Y coordinates of where the thumbstick is. It's between negative 230 something, whatever 2 to the 15th is, and positive 2 to the 15th. Um, so we normalize that. That's what this direction from position thing is. Um, and then we, that turns into left, right, up, or down, and then we just turn that LED on. Um, the reason we turn all the LEDs off between each move is so I don't have to be smart and figure out which LED used to be on or whatever. So this is like not very much code, right? 12 lines of code or something. We can, we can interact with physical devices with this pretty complex input scheme. It's a little bit nicer than this giant fatty button, right? It can do a lot of, of different things. Um, how many of you guys have played with drones before? The AR drones. OK. We have? an Xbox controller, we have a drone, <laughs> what should we do with these? I'm going to plug the battery in first. Please no one steal the Wi-Fi network for this drone. That would make my talk go poorly. <laughs> It's supposed to twitch like that. Don't worry. Do, do, do. And then we kill this thing. Kill the pain. And then we hope no one has stolen the Wi Fi network yet. And then codes. Drone. Okay, cool. So the Xbox controller is connected. Um, 
Which button should make it take off? I'm going to go with A, because that's the one I picked. So we hit A, and it takes off. Uh, you can make it go up and down. You all signed the waiver, right? Um, it can like spin around. Yeah, it's basically FPS controls. So this thumbstick makes it strafe and go forward and backwards. And I'm really bad at controlling it, but my two-year-old neighbor is pretty good at it. All right, so that's it, right? Like, it's super easy to control physical devices with JavaScript. And I'm going to show you the code for this, because it's, it's simple. I actually wrote this while I was sitting. It was supposed to flip left and right while I pressed the triggers, but I never tested it, so it didn't work. But imagine how cool it would have been if it flipped around. OK, so on the left move stick, we just turn it into a direction. Um, and then if it's telling it to go up, we, this is the, the, the AR drone client. You can tell it front. So when we press up on this joystick, it'll uh, send client.front, which makes the drone go forward. And the rest of it's pretty similar, right? Client.back, if the direction is down, it'll strafe left and right. So it's really, it's not that much code. Um, there's actually a Parrot AR drone Xbox module in NPM already, but that is against the spirit of Node to use something when you could rewrite it yourself. <laughs> so I, I rewrote it anyways. Um, the other things that we showed, or that we did when we, that I didn't talk about, are just the buttons. So when A gets pressed, we take off. When B gets pressed, we land. Um, yeah, so it's super simple. It's, it's not hard at all, and you can do cool things like impress your two-year-old neighbor. Um, or maybe get a job, but I don't know. Two-year-old neighbors are cooler. So, so that's the theme of the talk. Um, these demos themselves aren't like mind-blowingly amazing, but just the fact that they were so easy um, should be amazing to you. Because I don't know anything about hardware. I'm probably a mediocre developer at best, but I could still just like plug five wires in and then make something cool. Um, or I could buy these two off-the-shelf things and hook them together through JavaScript and then fly drones around in, in the library. <laughs> um, so if that's, that's kind of one thing I want you to take away from the talk, that you guys can do stuff that, that is amazing. You can do things that are way cooler than what I've done with a little bit of time and effort. Um, and that's my talk. <laughs>